5 Network. This is Medical Mondays. Good evening. Welcome to Medical Monday. I'm Carrie Sharp. Glad to be along with you for the next hour. I have Dr. David Genevico here with me from Advanced Hearing Solutions. We are talking about how to hear better. In fact, hearing solutions. Thank you for being with us. As always, it's great to be here, Carrie. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's start with talking about how you even got into this field. You've been doing it a while. Let's not talk about I'm how not, many years. No, it's, but you did just have a birthday. It's, it's we been more that. than 20 years as an audiologist. <laughs> so um, interestingly, I grew up in a family where my dad was an audiologist, mm -hmm. and he was one of the very first kind of in this profession in the 70s. Grew up around it. My dad owned a private practice. Uh, I went to Vanderbilt, earned a master's and a doctorate there, and have been doing this ever since. So I started my practice at, at Vanderbilt. I was on faculty and taught in the med medical school, did research. And then uh, in 2007, moved to Mount Juliet and opened a practice. So we've been there for 12 years. And you were just telling me, I said, how many audiology schools are around the nation? You said Vanderbilt, there, there are a number, and Vanderbilt is number Vanderbilt one. Vanderbilt is the number one audiology program in the country, yeah. Wow, it is. and you so were both a student and a teacher there. I was. In fact, I think I, I got them to number one, actually. <laughs> I'm sure it's all on you. I hope no you. one from Vanderbilt is listening. They'll say that's not true. We know what his grades were. No. But let's talk about your practice now set up in Mount Juliet, right sure. along the main drag there. Sure. So again, we opened up in 2007, been there for 12 years. Uh, I own a building right on Mount Juliet Road. We're about five, six tenths of a mile from the interstate. So um, I like to think of it as a pretty convenient location, whether folks are coming from the Mount Juliet, Lebanon, Hermitage, Old Hickory area. But we have folks that drive from Kentucky and Alabama and just getting on I-40, although getting on I-40 is never easy these days. Right. But, but we're a, a, a really quick drive just about from anywhere in, in Middle Tennessee. Um, we primarily specialize in helping adults with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. We do test some kids and do some different things, some diagnostic testing, but my passion is helping people hear better, helping them reconnect with their families, helping them reconnect with the things that are really important to them. And so that's why working with adults with hearing loss is, is such a passion of mine. It is, um, it's often something that is very, hearing loss is something that's very insidious. It sort of mm -hmm. very gradually sneaks up on us and sneaks our, our way into our lives. And it, it, one day you wake up and you reach a point and you're like, I have disconnected mm -hmm. from the things that I enjoy. You know, I've decided to quit going out to those restaurants that were too noisy for me to hear, or I used to be really involved with my community, but you know, I kind of got embarrassed. And so those are the things where we can see dramatic changes in people's lives by helping them with better hearing and helping them reconnect. And when people disconnect, it can often affect other parts of their health besides their hearing. Absolutely, so any primary care physician, take audiology just out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Any primary care physician is going to tell us that as we age, it is important to keep our minds and bodies and spirits engaged in things. Right. And that can be physical activity, but really it is me being with my family, it's me having friends, it's me doing social things, it's it's me going to church, it's situations where I'm mm -hmm. challenging my mind and I am staying active. And there are so many studies that show that people with untreated hearing loss start to withdraw from some of those situations, just like what I was talking about. And those that research shows that that can lead to depression and anxiety and, and overall health issues when we are not as active. And even things like dementia and mm -hmm. Alzheimer's are strongly tied with hearing loss. A lot of times because you're not engaging the brain like you were before. Absolutely. So the very, I could get really technical and I love research. We'll take the whole rest of the hour me talking <laughs> about science, but but the 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 principle or the theory is something that's called cognitive load theory. And if anybody's listening to this show tonight who has a significant hearing loss, you will understand exactly what I'm saying with this. Let's just take for example, there are two children in a classroom at school. Mm -hmm. One of them has normal hearing. One of them has a hearing loss. That child with normal hearing may not be paying perfect attention. They can be doodling or messing with their phone or whatever kids are allowed to do these days. But they're hearing 95, 100% of what that teacher says. And they can understand the message without being 100% intent. Right. Whereas somebody with hearing loss, a child next to that normal hearing child with hearing loss, 
may only be getting 50% of what the teacher says or 60%, and they have to be 100% yes. focused on every detail. And research just shows that that is tiring, it's exhausting, and it requires more cognitive resources, which may eventually lead to some of these other mm -hmm. problems that we're talking about. This is a medical show, and it is your chance to call in, talk to our expert about questions you have about hearing. And we have Mark, who has decided to do just that and kick off our questions tonight. Mark, thank you for being with us. What do you have? Uh, good evening to both of you guys. Good evening. Uh, I just want uh, thank you. Uh, I've had uh, my mom who, who's passed that had hearing problems. Uh, I've got uh, two two of her sisters. One that passed. She had hearing problems, and the last one, who's remaining, is 94 years old. Uh, still drives around in Michigan on Michigan Avenue, going to McDonald's or various places. But her hearing is not normal. I mean, I usually have to talk and yell. You can hear the TV in the background uh, as loud as I don't know what. And I can't convince her to like go get some help like I tried to do for my aunt and my mom. And so her generation, like in the, all of them were born in the 30s. Mm -hmm. It seems like, like they think somebody's going to do something or put something in their brain just to get their hear, hearing examined. And what can you do for people like in that generation to let them know this can truly change your life? It can be so revolutionary to bring in a whole new world that you were missing out. And more than that, it's not safety. I mean, you've got the TV yeah, on loud. Sure. If I come up through the garage, she can't hear anything if somebody was breaking in a window in the front of the house or whatever. So how can you convince people in that generation that this is a non-painful uh, item that they can get done and it would benefit them immensely. And I'll hang up and listen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. That's a fantastic question. I, I spend most of my career asking myself that same mm -hmm. question. So there is so much depth to, to, to what he's talking about. And so let me just let me just throw a few things out there. Um, I certainly do think there is a generational thing. And I think certainly folks, although your aunt may be a little bit older than that, but they grew up in the Depression. Yes. You know, I have so many patients who bring in or, or daughters or sons who bring in mom and dad and they're like, they can afford whatever they want, but he won't buy, you know, he yeah. won't buy anything. You know, he doesn't spend mm -hmm. any, and so, so part of this is about the expenditure. A and I think, Mark, a lot of it is that people are worried that they're going to spend money on something that might not help them. So that is, that is a big thing. I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. Remind me to come okay, back to that, Carrie. Okay, the second is, I think people really have to see benefit and have to see what this can do for their lives. It's hard for me to explain to you how great it would be to hear. Mm -hmm. It's okay for me to show somebody that. And so, although I, I don't have an office in Michigan, I can certainly say what we do with our patients is, and this works fantastically, come in, let us explain what we can do, and then take some hearing aids, take some technology, whatever it is we decide to do with them, and let them wear it for a week for two weeks, for three weeks, for a month, and wear it watching TV, wear it to a family gathering, go to church, be engaged with people, and really see what the positives and negatives of that experience are. And uh, that is to me the very best way to do that. Let me come back to the, to the financial part of it. There is certainly, I think, some fear involved because people understand, or a lot of people understand, mm -hmm. and have heard stories about, oh, hearing aids are very expensive, and certainly some of them can be. But it is federally mandated that there is a trial period with hearing aids. Meaning, if your aunt or if someone in my family needed some hearing aids, they have the right to try them and have the right to their money back if they decide not to keep them within a certain time, let's say a month or 30 days. Now, not every practice does that for free. Some will say, you know, we have a restocking fee of 10% or $500. In my practice, we do that for free because I want people to see those differences and really understand, okay, this can be completely life-changing. That being said, Mark, I have got some patients that I sit down and I've been doing this for a long time and I think I'm pretty darn good at it. <laughs> and they still say, no, this is not for me or, or they're skeptical about it. But I think the more positive stories that people hear, that's one of the reasons I come on the show, to share positive stories about how we have changed people's lives. I cannot tell you how many people have sat across the room for me or sat across the desk for me with tears in their eyes mm -hmm. because we reconnect 
connected them with what was important to them. And to some people, that's their family and wife and kids. And to some people, it's hearing the birds and the frogs and the crickets again. And to some people, it's music. It's different for everybody. But to, to me, it's kind of like finding that one thing that's really important to your loved one and saying, what if we could make this part of your life better through better hearing and through being reconnected? I hope that helps. That's a fantastic question. And I just think about the safety aspect that he brought Absolutely. up too, especially if she's living alone at 94 sure. years old, being able to hear what's going on around her. Living alone, driving a car, being yeah. able to hear warning signals. Mm -hmm. um, she needs to get a loud dog that barks if yes. she's not going to get hearing help. I agree. Okay, <laughs> let's go to Mike on the line. Mike, thanks for calling in. What's your question tonight? Go ahead, Mike. You're on the line. Oh, I think we may have lost I've Mike. I've talked too long for No, Mike. that's okay. Mike, <laughs> if you can still hear us, I'm going to keep you on hold, or you can call back in and we'll get to you and take your question. In the meantime, we have to take a quick break. We would love to hear from you as well. If you have a question for Dr. Geneva Co., go ahead and give us a call, 615-737-PLUS. We're here all hour. Go ahead and give us a call. We're coming right back.